Hi, my name is Mrs. Kelter, and today we're going to be talking about the vulva. For reference purposes, the vulva is everything that you can see from the outside. So if a female were to go to a checkup or go to an exam, maybe her gynecologist or obstetrician, she would be laying down on the bed and her legs would go up into the stirrups and this is what you would be looking at. The first structure is the mons pubis, and the mons pubis is basically a mound of fatty tissue located just above the pubic bone. This is where uh, pubic hair will grow. This is also where if a female is on the heavier side, on the overweight to obese side, this is where she will have a little extra um, fattier mound of tissue in that area. Um, there's actually, there used to be a show on cable TV where they would do a liposuction of the mons pubis for women who thought their mons, mons pubis area was overly fatty. Located just below the mons pubis are folds of skin, otherwise known as the labia majora or outer lips. Labia actually means lips. So if you think of the lips on your face and rotate those uh, vertically, it's very, very similar. Uh, the labia majora is also where pubic hair will grow. And then if you sort of expose or push the labia majora out to the side, that exposes the next structure. The more flimsy or fleshy tissue located just inside the labia majora is known as the labia minora, and these are the inner lips. Located at the top of the labia majora and labia minora, located just under what is called the clitoral hood, is what's called the clitoris or clitoris, and this is a sensor, sensory organ. Uh, this organ is about one millimeter high, and when the, this organ is stimulated, it can become erect, like two, three, four millimeters high. Just below the clitoris is what's called the urethral opening. Urethral, like urethra, the urethra is what carries urine to the outside of the body. So this is the urethral opening. This is where uh, urine or pee would flow out of. Um, nothing's going up into this hole. Sometimes I get individuals who think that the penis could accidentally slip in this hole or the tampon could accidentally slip in this hole. Um, this hole is not flexible um, by any means. Um, if a female, a female had to have a catheter, uh, she could have a catheter inserted into this spot. Uh, bacteria can creep up here. STDs can creep up here. But as far as an object slipping in there by accident, that's not the case. So the vagina is a hollow muscular tube and the vaginal opening is just the opening of the vagina. Now this is where babies would pass through. So this is a very flexible muscular passageway for the female. Um, not only can babies pass through here, this is where tampons would be inserted. This would be the, where the penis would go during intercourse. Uh, and this is where menstrual flow would flow out of. You will see in the illustration, there's an arrow pointing to a line stemming down from the vaginal opening. And this is what's called an episiotomy. Uh, during child labor, sometimes the woman will begin to tear during the childbirth process. At that point, the doctor will stop basically the labor process. They will do a small incision um, down towards the anus. It's just a very small incision and this is an optional thing. So uh, the woman can have a conversation with her doctor whether or not she decides this is necessary or whether he or she as the doctor decides this is necessary. Um, and that will spread the opening of that vaginal, vaginal opening and allow for the baby to pass through easier without any more tearing. And then afterwards they'll do, they'll numb the area and they'll do a small uh, surgical procedure to, to stitch where that incision was made on the female. And finally, the last item for this activity is the pap smear. Usually when girls either turn 18 or when they become sexually active, they will go to the gynecologist and, and have a basic um, exam performed. This includes the pap smear, generally includes a breast exam. What they will do with the pap smear is they will take a long Q-tip 
and insert that into the vaginal opening and they will swab the cervical area. They're swabbing for what are called abnormal cells. These abnormal cells are sometimes nothing. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, they, if it is abnormal, sometimes they just magically disappear. Sometimes these abnormal cells can be a sign of HPV, human papillomavirus, which um, all sexually active individuals, uh, about three out of four, three out of four sexually active individuals have HPV. We'll talk more about that in another lesson. The abnormal cells can also be a precursor for cervical cancer. So it's really important at a younger age to get this exam done for basically baseline information so that if there is an issue um, later on, they have some information to compare that to. Okay, this concludes our lesson on the vulva. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at the female reproductive system. Thank you very much.